<laughs> okay, we're going to call this meeting to order. Is everybody here back there? All right. Thank you for coming. Sounds like we have an echo. All right, there we go. So this is the um, focus meeting of the select board. Today is March 14th, 2022. I just want to make a brief announcement about Patriots Day. I can find it right here. Ah, where's it? Put it on here. Oh, here it is. Okay, we are going to be having the Patriots Day um, events this year. So thanks to the Celebrations and Ceremonies Committee and, and Henry Dane, um, we are getting going on that. And um, the Merriam's Corner event will take place a week before, which is Saturday, April 9th. The Patriots Day Parade will take place on the state holiday, Monday, April 11th, um, I mean 18th. And the Dawn Salute will take place at the bridge on the end, actual anniversary date of Patriots Day, April 19th. So more details will be on the website. So uh, tonight we're going to focus on transportation. And I'd just like to make a very brief um, introduction. The select board goals this year included two of them that I'm going to read briefly. One is to implement and identify and implement opportunities for enhancing transportation throughout town to support economic, social equity, and recreational needs. Increase use of shuttle buses, school buses, on-demand transportation, the rail trail, Aspet River pedestrian bridge, and village center wayfinding improvements. And the second select board goal this year about transportation is coordinate the efforts of town bodies to support the complete streets goals of enhancing pedestrian safety and managing the increased use of bikes and other non-automobile motorized vehicles while protecting our natural conservation areas and trails. So tonight, we want to begin a conversation about how we might improve the quality, quantity, effectiveness, and safety, not necessarily in that order, but um, improve our transportation and mobility in Concord. Let's start documenting what we do have, who's well served, who's not. Let's start collecting metrics, traffic volumes, safety data, what can be quantified. Let's see what other communities have done. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. And um, we're very pleased to have here with us tonight the new Transportation Advisory Committee, which has been working really hard and meeting almost weekly, working on all of these issues since November of 2021. They are an energetic, hardworking group and eager to hear everyone's input tonight. The members are Chairman Nick Pappas, Norman Abbott, Kathleen Ogden Fasser, Dan Schrager, Laura Davis, Phil Posner, and Michelle Cardinal. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Nick Pappas, the chair to uh, give us an overview. Um, and after he speaks, we'll hear from some um, senior management team people. Then we're going to have a discussion. And we'll conclude the meeting by trying to put together the very beginning of an action template. Hi, thank you, Terry. Uh, yeah, I'm Nick Pappas. I'm chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee. And the main thing I'm going to do tonight is show you uh, our committee's thoughts on a roadmap, as it were, for transportation. And uh, a big, it's a big thing, as you could tell from the list that Terry went over. In some ways, it's very ambitious. And uh, the real question is, why do we need it? It seems like I should talk about that first. And uh, the world has changed is the basic answer. Uh, if you look back 15 or 20 years, the world's, the US's transportation plan was roads and cars. 
That was it, especially in the suburbs. And the suburbs were built around that with malls and strip malls, and it, it, it wasn't great, but that's what we had. But the world has changed, and we have a need for more sustainable solutions to transportation. We have a need for more equity in transportation. And that uh, brought us to the uh, work of the Long Range Planning Committee, the Comprehensive Long Range Planning Committee that I was on. And when we looked at transportation, next slide. When we looked at transportation, um, the first thing we realized was that uh, we didn't have, a as a town, we did not have a comprehensive transportation plan, nor did we have a funding mechanism. If we were going to do big projects, there wasn't any pipeline of money that we could look to, to to fund those projects. And in doing our work, the first many months of, the, of that committee, the Long Range Planning Committee, we collected input, website, meetings with people, all sorts of things. And we heard a lot about transportation, about traffic, about parking, about equity, about lack of service, and uh, we collected it all. And the result was when we documented this, the transportation and mobility section of the long range plan, uh, the first goal was to implement a focal point of in, uh, in town government. At that point, and still, we do not have a single person whose full time job is dealing with transportation issues and uh, to implement sustainable solutions. It was clear that we, did, we needed to go in a different direction than the historical approach, that we needed sustainable solutions. We needed, um, I'll talk about that more in a minute, but also equity, provide service to the underserved. There are many people, whether they're workers in retail businesses, uh, people who are economically disadvantaged, the elderly, students who don't have licenses, or others or the handicapped you know we need transportation and mobility solutions that serve everyone in the town better than the traditional automobiles and roads and we need to support local businesses the solution you know there, there were many of the the comments that we received in the committee were were about um were about the needs of small business and also we need to do it in a way that respects our history and our natural environment in concord So, um, so we came up, we've worked for the past couple of months, three months now, on coming up with a roadmap to what are the key things that we think in the Transportation Advisory Committee that needs serious consideration. The first is complete streets, and people have heard that term, and there's often confusion about it, but I think it's a really simple concept, which is roadways that are safe for everybody, safe for automobiles, safe for bicyclists, safe for pedestrians, safe for the handicapped. You know, we don't have that. Um, and the street I live on is frightening in that regard. There are no sidewalks. <laughs> um, also, uh, we need to define the areas of need. And, and the thing we're pointing to here in the roadmap is that we need a comprehensive approach to complete streets. We need, we, we can't approach this in a piecemeal fashion and do this intersection this year and another intersection this, this next year and the design standards have changed and they don't, you know, they aren't the same. People can't expect the same sort of anything. So we need an approach. We need an overall design for how we're going to approach the, this multi-use of the streets. The second thing is ride services. And there are three parts to that. Uh, one part is a fixed route bus service. The, we actually, uh, the planning department, Marsha Rasmussen obtained funding shortly before the pandemic for for such a service and unfortunately because of the pandemic the funding was was uh, taken away but that would have been a service and should be a service that does something like the following she had a route laid out that would run from west concord depot out commonwealth ave to the prison over to the baker ave extension where the medical community is over to emerson hospital across route two to more uh, medical establishments the thoreau business district concord center out Lexington Road to Merriam's Corner and ultimately to, uh, to Virginia Road where there are other businesses in the school. That would have been the core. And that is something that people could rely on. And it would be useful to visitors, it would be useful to workers, it would be useful to many people. 
The second part of ride services would be uh, bringing back to life the Crosstown Connect, a regional approach to transportation. We need a way for our residents to get, play, get other places outside of town, whether that's to shop in a mall or get to doctors or get to Alewife, which is a whole different transportation nexus than commuter rail. We need something like that. And we need to help the, the other communities involved in Crosstown Connect bring that back to life. And finally, the third component, on-demand services. A fixed route bus service is great for the populated areas where there's high density, but it does nothing for the residents in the other parts of town where density is lower. It also, there are other needs that a fixed route bus service just doesn't meet that we need to consider as part of an on-demand service. And on-demand service is being done now in Newton. It's being done by the Berkshire Regional Transportation Authority. It's not a wild idea. It's something that's being piloted. And you know we have to learn from that and figure out how to apply it in Concord. And finally, these things, these ride services need to be connected with other things. Their schedules and need to be meshed with things like commuter rail and any other services in town. Another part of the roadmap is transportation for students. Frankly, we have a school bus design approach that's optimized for elementary school. And unfortunately, once you get to middle school and high school and you start doing extracurricular activities and sports activities, we really don't have good solutions. My granddaughter is in the sixth grade in the middle school. When she does an act after school activity, the bus will drop her off two and a half miles from the house with no sidewalks. Try that in the winter. <laughs> Try it anytime. <laughs> it's hard to convince an 11 year old that's a good thing. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, also there was a demand, you might recall, I think it was three years ago, there was a, a warrant article to put more parking at the high school. Why? Because partly, largely because the, the bus services don't meet the needs of the students. So, you know, we need to work with the school departments to figure out how to, how to deal with that. And it's potentially, a, right now you have individual students driving cars to school which is not a very sustainable solution. Then retail and food delivery services. There are businesses in town uh, that do make deliveries. And that's something I think we should encourage the business community to explore expanding. Uh, you know, why can't a, some of them pool together and, and have, you know, have a delivery service that services several businesses? I know I certainly would enjoy not having to drive two or three times a week to West Concord from near the Carlisle border. It's a long drive. It would be great if I could at least get some things delivered. And then finally, uh, long-term issues, the need for a long-term funding plan. A few years ago, we realized that we were gonna have a huge uh, capital investment in a middle school, and we realized we had many other capital projects coming down the pike. And we, we spent time trying to figure out as a town, how do you phase those in so that we have a manageable situation? There's nothing like that happening for transportation. We really need to figure out how to do long range investments. We need infrastructure, whether it's the roads or vehicles or whatever it may be. We need to, to, to fund startup expenses and other capital expenses. More immediate work, things we can do now, uh, there are things happening in town for transportation. There are tour buses, there's um, you know, the transportation network companies, Uber and Lyft, there's bike share coming, there's commuter rail, there are private shuttles and things like that. Uh, it would be really good if we had a place where residents can turn to find out answers to questions like, are there still taxi companies in Concord? Mm -hmm. Does the ride come to Concord? I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, it does, <laughs> but you, it's hard to figure out. Okay, um, so we, I think immediately we, that's something that needs, needs to be dealt with. Uh, winter transportation conditions. The Public Works Department does an excellent job of clearing our roads. They do a great job for the businesses in the, in the uh, business district of actually clearing the snow. But if we're going to have more people using bicycles and we're going to have E-bikes are coming. Uh, I, one of the members of our committee, uh, transportation advisory committee, has one. And uh, the police department, the police chief tells me they're expecting many more of them. We need, we need to find out what we need to do with the roads and the sidewalks to make, make uh, 
make winter time a better time for getting around. Uh, road safety. About in 2018, also, I believe, uh, there was an opportunity to get grants from the state for uh, complete streets. Well, the town passed a complete streets policy so that it could apply for the uh, grants. It uh, obtained funding for three projects. There were 49 other projects on the list. And the more have emerged since then. Okay, so there are approximately 50 safety issues in town that we aren't dealing with. How were those three chosen? <laughs> well, we've done some research and it wasn't through objective criteria. <laughs> so we need to do some work before we can deal with those 50 projects, potential projects, we need to come up with some criteria. How do you decide which are the important projects? When is, this, when is it really a safety issue or is it some other issue? We don't have that. We don't have any guidelines for how to go about making those decisions. If you do, grant funding becomes more possible. And um, finally, maintenance and management plan. Uh, I think I have an example that really illustrates this. We need to keep the pub we, we have a big investment in public roads. We need to maintain them. If we don't maintain them, we have huge expense for rebuilding the roads. Major road construction costs a lot of money. This year, uh, the Public Works Department asked for three and a half million dollars for road maintenance. They got two million. That means we're digging a hole. <laughs> that means we're gonna have to spend a lot more money down the road. So just as I said, we need to have some way of planning for and budgeting capital expenses. I think we need more realistic um, way of budgeting for maintenance for, for the upkeep. So all of this is within these overarching themes of sustainability, equity, business, economics, all of that. So that's why we're doing it. And uh, I think that's the end. So uh, next, did you want to have Alan speak? Sure. Um, Alan Cathcart is here with us. And then we may have some other SMT people um, via Zoom as well. Thank you for coming tonight, Alan. Sure, you're welcome. Um, Alan Cathcart, Director of Concord Public Works. I think on the Zoom in attendance, we also have the town engineer. Uh, and assistant town engineer as well. So they're kind of listening, obviously. Um, that's Steve Dukran, the town engineer, and Justin Richardson, the assistant town engineer. So they're available for questions and that sort of thing. So talking with Nick and um, Aaron Stevens to try and understand the presentation tonight, um, we realized that it might be important for people to really understand what public works does. And we hear a lot of needs and interests uh, community-wide as far as um, what people would like to see. Um, recently, it's a relatively new management group over there. We were tasked to identify what it takes to replace and repair our existing infrastructure, the assets that we're responsible for uh, within the right-of-way. That would include the pavement, area that would include sidewalks that would include stormwater systems and culverts and that sort of thing um i thought it might be helpful as we developed that plan the other thing that i thought was very wise wasn't asked to do a a long-range capital plan so it wasn't just hand to mouth but over a five ten year period what would it take uh, we went through that exercise and if i can um, share uh, the screen i will um, I'll just bring up a table that might be helpful um, for people to see. This is actually the Article 10, where we talk about sort of the more significant capital improvements debt plan. When we talk about uh, public works, there is one section that deals with capital outlay. And you can see somewhere in the tune of um, you know $600,000 or so that we're looking for for asset management, uh, striping, signage, uh, replacements, that sort of thing. Um, um, Alan, can you make that a little bit bigger? Yes, I can. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Can you see that? Can there you, you guys see that? If you want it big, bigger. Okay. And then you go down to really where we have the bigger money, 
And you're looking at, uh, this is where the debt in borrowed funds, we've identified uh, traffic improvements, pavement management, culvert bridge repairs, and vehicle heavy equipment uh, replacement. What's interesting is it looks good um, on the warrant. What we need to you know, understand is the request that was made when we uh, put together the five-year plan. And this is very important, and I think it's a really important slide to show people. And I used this at the pre-town uh, meeting review uh, for the articles. We're looking at, for public works, a request of $34 million over five years. It's all inclusive. What's important is these are to repair and replace existing assets. We had it identified year by year. And really, I would take the roll up of some of the larger you know, expenditures. When we look down here in this section, we have $20 million here. Um, that's here with pavement management. That's to restore the condition of the road that people drive and, and sort of expect as far as uh, maintain in a way that you don't have significant potholes, that they're not deteriorating to the point of complete uh, uh, disrepair and uh, a reclaim or something. Uh, that's a lot of money. We understand that. Our task was not to say, what can we get? The task was to the community, what do we need? And that's what we presented. So we have some funding, which is good for culverts and bridge repairs for FY23. We have funding for, as Nick mentioned, the pavement management. It wasn't 3.5 million, but it's 2 million. We'll make a dent. It will start you know, a, a, a making improvements. I think people will see. It's significantly more than we had in the past. Uh, we also have traffic improvements where we can do some, some work uh, where we're looking at you know, serious more Sorry. Um, don't know who's. That's me. Okay. But if I'm if I'm muted. Uh, no, go to your speaker on the right, lower right. Sorry. Sorry about that. You just want to leave the audio from the Zoom. Come out. I did do that. But... I'm going Sorry. to try that. Okay, okay, great. Okay, we're there. <laughs> yep. But what's interesting is, again, this is to repair and replace existing. What we don't have is funds, and it's, it's realistic. There's only so much money the town has. We understand that. And they have to divvy it up based on all the department needs. We don't have money in our parking lot uh, request, which means that when people ask, what about the commuter parking lot over in West Concord, there are no funds, at least in FY23, to do any work, whether it's design, construction. Um, the pedestrian bike improvements, we'd asked for $537,000. Seems like a lot of money. We've recently reviewed a request through the West Concord Advisory Committee, where they did a very deliberate, detailed assessment of the conditions just in the uh, Junction Village area. And when I bring that up, it's all very reasonable. It's, this is sort of taken from their presentation, but you know, what do we need to do with pedestrians, bike conditions in West Concord Junction today? And I go through the slides and they talk about a, a, a trip they took. It's a fairly small area, but uh, very well attended by different uh, boards, committees, representatives. This is the general area of their you know, focus area. They identified crosswalks, sidewalks, bike accommodations, signage, speed issues, all of which our engineering division have also identified. The difference is the engineering division has to identify and prioritize where are we spending the money. We would agree with this group that there are significant needs. What they identified would seem very reasonable are can we do some you know, crosswalk improvements? Um, if, if you look, um, we have representatives here sort of identifying these problems for us, and they are significant. And the town has identified these problems for decades. This is an example of the Main Street 
um, bridge you know, by, over the Assabet River as far as its configuration design. You know, where should we focus? It's fascinating that when we look at all the needs that they identified, the engineering division, I said, can you give me a back of the envelope cost estimate if we were to take care of those needs? We're talking about a million dollars for that work. What's important is if I zoom out and show people, this is the town of Concord. That's the West Concord Junction area of assessment. That one area is a million dollars, and that doesn't address all of Concord's needs and interests. So the challenge for public works is when people point out things that are obvious to us as well, but we, meaning the community, doesn't have the resources to spend money you know, towards them. So we go through a budget cycle, and all we can do with public works is identify the need and then be prepared to respond to the customers and citizens when they come back and eight months and say, where are we with this project? Well, right now, the answer is we're dealing with certain aspects that have been it's already prioritized. We're going to take, take care of the pavement. We're going to take care of the culvert work. We do some traffic improvements, but we don't have funds to do some of these other what people might say are nice to do. I'd say they're need to do. But the reality is these are not for improvements and expansion of infrastructure. This is to take care of what we already own and are responsible for as a community. So when we talk about expansion and improvement, it's more than the $34 million that we flagged. And we flagged it only to be informative because we said we could use $537,000 for bike and pedestrian work. We have zero. West Concord Junction has identified a million dollars that they would like to see done soon. We would agree it should be a priority, but I think we need to put into perspective when we're trying to identify what the needs and priorities are of the community, just the base foundational needs. Then we need to add and complement the additional needs that we're looking at, the connectivity issues, the transportation issues. If we do it smart, We'll look at opportunities when there's shared interests and there's common needs and, and potentially funding. The other thing I hear a lot is the desire to, well, can't grants take care of this? Well, we have a significant delta between what the community needs are and what will be available through grants. And the challenge I've seen already, and I see this with the water and wastewater infrastructure, Concord does not necessarily fare too well when we look at issues like environmental justice and needs that we compare to some other communities in the Commonwealth. It's just, it's a fact. You know, we have to, going to be strategic. As Nick mentioned, there are uh, complete street funds. There might be something to the tune of $400,000. We've identified a couple projects already that we've submitted that are, you know, of interest to the community. But it goes back to the question on, who prioritizes what projects and when. And I think that's where we're trying to look to figure out how to, how to work with the Transportation Advisory Committee to help prioritize the Select Board, the Public Works Commission. But it really isn't staff's decision, nor should it be. Our, our responsibility is to share with you the information, let the community make some of these decisions. And they're going to be some hard decisions. But I do know, talking with the interim town manager, she actually was excited about what you know, I I told her I was going to you know share this tonight at least this spreadsheet, um, and when I go to it, she got excited about trying to figure out opportunities. It may be something like we need to go out and borrow, and maybe we do a significant borrowing for a five-year investment. So you will literally see these these um, replacements and potentially improvements when you do a crosswalk. Maybe you can take that time to supplement with grant. Uh, funding. Maybe we can do something creative and different once we uh, identify uh, an area that we're going to be putting this, you know, the, the funds towards. So that's just a overview of public works. I think we're best when we have a real project and it's funded. We are not great with the planning. That's where we need the support of the community and, you know, working with the planning department and the uh, TAC. Um, and I do understand there's an interest to try and bring someone involved, uh, a professional transportation 
uh, whether it's a planner or engineer or even work with professional consultants to evaluate what we have, like the existing complete street list, figure out if it makes sense. I know it's incomplete when I listen to the residents and hear some of their interests. All of their interests are not captured on that complete street list. And we want to make sure we have a mechanism where when they ask, we can say, yep, we haven't heard that one. Maybe we can screen it. Maybe we can present it to the TAC for inclusion on that list. That would be a great way of sort of having a very transparent um, list where people could look at. And if they haven't thought about it, or if they see, okay, it's on the list, but it's number 33, what can we do about that? Well, 33 may become number two if it complements another project that they may not be aware of. And those are the things that staff and I think the uh, town uh, decision makers can, can work towards. So hopefully that's helpful. That's very helpful, Alan. Thank you very much. Um, so I want to ask if there are some other uh, senior management staff uh, by Zoom. I see um, Marsha Rasmussen is with us by Zoom and possibly some others. Uh, whether any of you um, senior management staff would like to say anything. Madam Chairman, I would be, um, I'd like to have a few words to offer. Um, Marsha Rasmussen, Director of Planning and Land Management. And uh, planning has long been involved with transportation. I mean, it was one of the topics of the 1987 long range plan. It was a focus. Uh, there was a transportation planning effort in 2000 that focused on uh, traffic, uh, traffic calming primarily. Um, and then there have been different pieces or components of all of this. Concord is, the layout of Concord is a is like a wheel. All of the roads were, were spokes and the hub was Concord Center it's because they wanted traffic to go through the center. Um, the community advocated for two train stations. That, that was remarkable. We have two commuters train stations. It's really phenomenal that we are that, that fortunate. But come with, with that comes a fee. Uh, the town pays the MBTA $500,000 a year for the privilege of having a commuter rail, these two stations in Concord. And it's based on our service through those, those, uh, through those stations. And as a result, Concord residents benefit from the use of the ride, which is available for those who, who need alternative transportation to get from point A to point B. Um, I don't have the exact numbers at my fingertips, but I believe it's like four to 5,000 trips per year that, that either um, start in Concord and go to other parts of the Commonwealth. Um, and it's a low cost, well, it's a relatively low cost way of getting around. So, so planning has long been involved with all different kinds of planning efforts and looking at long-term, how do we connect people to where they want to go. Uh, in 2016, we worked with the Central Transportation Planning staff to look at first mile, last mile that was focused on West Concord. And, and through that, we, we, we realized the plan from 2012 that's identified the need for a pedestrian bridge over the Assabet River to connect Baker Ave with the West Concord train station might be a possibility. And so we've slowly and incrementally designed how that could work. And we've requested more and more funds. And if we can connect it in a way from public point to public point uh, so that it's publicly accessible for all, then perhaps we can get it on the transportation, um, the state's uh, transportation improvement program so that the construction would be funded through the state. It costs money. Um, the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail was envisioned back in 1987. It wasn't until 2004 when we did the environmental assessment and, and the Friends of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail slowly got the community preservation funding for design that that has evolved. And we will see completion of the bridge this July uh, 2022. That's a, a, a long time period to bring different areas together. Transportation is not a not fully or not wholly a Concord issue. It is a regional issue. The, the difficulty is that we're, we're in between different regions. Uh, there is the Route 128 corridor and there's the 495 corridor. 
we have been partnering with uh, communities to the west of us for the Crosstown Connect. That was an evolutionary process where uh, we were invited to a program back in 2010. Um, and from that grew the, the, the concept of Crosstown Connect, which is a transportation management association. And it, it involves our communities and our businesses that are in those communities. Concord has not been able to be a full participant because we don't have a vehicle or a transit, any kind of transit device to offer, to become part of um, a more robust Crosstown Connect. And then the pandemic came along and that has, uh, the value has um, gone by the wayside because people are not taking public transportation right now. So that is sort of in, the CTC is, is in hiatus right now. Um, and so we're, we're, I guess, Planners are a little bit opportunistic. When we see a grant, we say, is there, is there a need that we can address with, through this grant? And so we've gotten pieces of grants. We've gotten funding for bike shelters and bike racks. And we have looked at um, how can we do these shared spaces? And so that's funding our bike share program and some improvements on old Marlboro Road to address some safety and some bicycle issues. And we're looking at how can we make all of these work? Becoming aware, talking with public works, I think we're going to be in a stronger position moving forward as we do our planning. But um, I, uh, the, the whole complete streets issue, planning has been advocating for complete streets since, since this became a buzzword back in 2015. And it wasn't until 2018, 2019 that public works actually said, yes, we're gonna do this. And so they were able to get some funding to do some of the projects. But as, as Alan said, there's a long list of what needs to be done. When we look at the overall um, improvements that are being done around the community, uh, the, the great thing is that public works looked at, okay, if we're going to be making improvement, major improvements in a street, what else needs to be fixed? You've got water, you've got sewer, those are all, underground. Sometimes you have electricity all underground. How do we incorporate all of those? And that increases the cost of different types of construction activities. Um, so I think that's my 10 cents for tonight. And uh, the, you know, if you have other questions, I'd, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Marsha. Are there other um, senior management people, um, perhaps Kate, um, if you want to add anything or anybody else on Zoom. And then after that, we'll turn to um, some other people from the Transportation Committee and other committees. Um, sure, I can, <clears throat> Kate Hodges, Deputy Town Manager. I, I suppose what I would add um, is really from a human services perspective. And, you know, I would say that the Council on Aging does a really great job of making sure that we are providing um, rides to seniors as they need it for various things, um, not just medical appointments. They do a lot of um, out of town shopping, et cetera. We don't have any real data um, on those who might need rides under the age of 60 for whatever reason, either because they don't have a vehicle or their vehicle is in a state of disrepair. We just don't have that type of data. There was a thought um, with a couple of the programs that were coming out pre-COVID that, that might provide us some data, but it didn't. And so we keep hearing, um, we meaning the town, keeps hearing that there's this need. Um, and I'm not saying that there isn't, but we don't have any data points for that. And so I think that it would be important as we explore it to really understand what the need is, because I would hate for us to put a lot of emphasis on you know, something about rides uh, for people under the age of 60, if there isn't a need for that. Um, and the other thing is uh, what we do understand is folks who are being discharged from the hospital. And that's been something that's been brought up both at the disability committee level and at our human services meetings. Um, we have a policy that uh, we don't bring necessarily people home from the hospital because the discharge instructions often say that they need to be have somebody that's at their home to be able to care for them. And so we don't want to pick them up and drop them home when they're alone. We also don't necessarily know if the discharge from the hospital, what it's for, nor should we. 
um, but whether there's medication or, or other things like that. So um, I do see that as a need. I just don't know if it's really the town's um, responsibility to be able to, to deal with that and the liability associated with that. But it could be that there's a service that that, that does happen. So those would be the things that you know maybe weren't covered. Okay, thank you. Is there any um, other um, staff person on on Zoom? Um, do you, does anyone? I, I can tell you that uh, Ginger oops, Ginger Quarles from the um, Council on Aging. She's the Council on Aging director. Is here if you had any specific questions relative to that. Um, and I also see Beth Williams on the call, um, who is our uh, tourism and economic vitality coordinator. So, right. Thank you for attending. And I also saw um, Steve Dukren and Justin Richardson. So just um, raise your hand as we go along if you do want to add something. So at this point, um, is there anyone else from the transportation committee that would like to add anything? Uh, Phil. Uh, come up to a microphone. Thank you. So I uh, just wanted to say thank you to Nick and to Alan and to Marsha and to Kate and the others on the staff uh, and volunteers who've uh, put in their time with respect to this issue. I think we really have a terrific start. Um, the only additional thing that I would like to reemphasize is that as the town proceeds, uh, I think it's very important for safety uh, of pedestrians, cyclists, and other folks who are using the roads be included in considerations as we think about design, think about priorities. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. Are there people from other? Um, well, let's start with the select board then, and then we'll go to some other committees who might be attending by Zoom. So do members of the select board have questions or comments um, based on what we've heard so far tonight? Matt? Sure. Um, I have some questions for Mr. Cathcart. So uh, the first is you had said that for the, there was a million dollars worth of work for West Country uh, Junction itself. Um, but just not to uh, confuse things, there is actually a funded project that's expected to be done there this year, right? So even though there, it's not going to be the scope that you pointed out for a million dollars, there there will be curbing and crosswalk improvements, other that calming that's happening this year. Yes, thank you uh, for that clarification. There is, it's part of the Complete Street Grant that we've already received, and the engineering division has gone through final design. I think we reached out to West Concord Advisory Committee to inform them of a tentative sort of plan and schedule for this summer's construction. So that is planned and, and um, will be bid shortly. Okay, so, yeah. thanks. And then secondly, uh, while Concord doesn't necessarily fare all that well um, with grants, and I mean, as we saw uh, with uh, the ARPA funding, we, we did get some money. And I assume with the uh, infrastructure grant that we should get perhaps even a bit more money because the total bucket of money is more. I don't know. Um, I saw that, that Massachusetts is getting approximately $9 billion. Do we have any inkling of what we can expect and how that might help bridge the gap that you've identified here? Not at this time. The only information I do have that's concrete is the water wastewater funding, which we uh, put in for it's going to be distributed from the federal government through the state revolving fund. Uh, and we're familiar with that process. That's the only vehicle that exists. And Concord did receive a favorable um, response. We're on the list for the NAGOG treatment facility. When you look at how we rate many of the other communities that are eligible for SRF funding are getting potentially um, uh, principal forgiveness and grants for their work 
Concord has been identified because we don't fit any the needs categories as a low interest, which is still very good, especially given the economic climate today as far as how volatile it could be. So it's something, but I'd much prefer having the principal forgiveness. Of course, (laughs) (laughs) who wouldn't? A third question is that, uh, of course, our own town funds for our transportation infrastructure are only a piece of the puzzle that there's also the state that has things on their transportation improvement program or the tip. Um, And there's, of course, state owned infrastructure in town. So I guess my question is, what projects do we have on the tip um, from Public Works? Um, and then what other you know, projects do you anticipate you know, that the state's going to be doing here um, that may help the situation? So it's premature for me to give you any direct um, knowledge, with the exception of we have talked with MassDOT on potentially rotary improvements or upgrades that they've been considering for many, many years. Um, But as far as on the transportation, we don't have uh, at this point uh, a handle on where we think they're going to be spending money in Concord. Now, that's part of what we'll be doing in the in the short term, looking at where the funds are. I understand the chapter 90 may get an infusion Uh um, and we'll get our portion of that. I know that's, you know, currently being discussed, uh, I was talking to people at MMA recently about that, and this is only as of yesterday, I think, where we've gotten an announcement there'll be more potential Chapter 90. We do get six, seven $700,000 a year anyway. It will be uh, part of the contribution from the state, but uh, I don't have the information yet at this point as far as the other funding. But there must be a list of projects that are on the tip as it stands today within the boundaries of Concord. Alan, if I may. Please, Marsha, if you can, yeah. Well, uh, there are three that I know of. There's Route 2A improvement, safety improvements, uh, which is at the Lincoln Concord line. Uh, There are safety improvements at Baker Ave. And then there's the completion of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail uh, Phase 2D, the last half mile in Concord that I know are on the tip and are funded um, within the next two to three years. uh, Okay, but not like Elm Street going to the Acton line? No. Okay. No, that um, is not on the tip. And, and Marsha, I'm not sure if Steve Dukran, if you're available, or if you have any other information you might want to share as far as the town engineer. Steve Dukran, town engineer. Um, the ones that Marsha mentioned, those are the ones I'm aware of as well. So, for example, if the Aspet Bridge were to be completely designed and then it's we're going to apply for the tip how many years out would that be is there like a three-year lead time or something to get on the list i i think it's variable isn't it i mean they they, they can shuffle the deck at any time right. for, I for that bridge it, it would you're absolutely right um matt that um it would again, be opportunistic. If a major project could not go forward because they were and another community had not completed design of a major project and the funds were available and the bridge was ready to go, they could insert that in an amendment to the transportation improvement plan. All right, thanks. Okay, great. Other questions from board members? Linda. Um, this is um, for anyone from senior management who wants to answer this. Uh, Alan, you already touched on this a bit when you said that um, we need to define a planning process that probably draws from TAC, from the senior management team, perhaps from outside consultants to help um, look at what we have need and where we might find funding sources. Um, is there anything else besides that that, that you know, I think we've done a, a remarkable job in terms of going after what state grants we can go after, but that's time from everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you've pointed out, you know, it's not always successful after a lot of effort is put into this grant writing. And then the size of those grants is not significant necessarily. So is there anything additionally that you can think of that in terms of the planning process? 
and the resources needed for that planning process. Yeah, I think what's important tonight, and <clears throat> to the credit of the select board, you're uh, you're helping the community identify a gap. You know, I said I I can tell you what public works can do well. You know, we do well if it's funded with planning. Marsh has sort of you know, sort of offered years, decades of planning experience. I think the challenge for Concord is how do we connect these these needs and interests? As Nick identified, it's evolved, you know, from just roads to how do we accommodate many different interests in the right of way. Um, there, what I've learned just in the few short years as director, there's stakeholders that have you know uh, real interests in participating. You know, we we hear from them regularly. Uh, the challenge is the uh, general public who doesn't tend to think much about these to help them understand what it is we're trying to achieve. Um, they're the ones who ultimately have to, you know, fund these things. Certainly, we're looking for grants, but as, as Nick mentioned, sort of when we were talking at one point, we can't just rely on that. It may help infuse some of the, the, the needs, but we need to maintain what we have. And if we're going to expand upon what we have, we need to identify there's going to be costs not just for the expansion. People like to think about the nice new kitchen, but that will sort of over years require replacement, rehabilitation. Anytime we add to our system or the services we're providing, for instance, winter maintenance needs, you're talking uh, operating costs as well and future replacement costs. So our job is to identify those things, share with the community and then make decisions based on, you know, not to freeze, but to say, Let's do something. And Concord in the last 10 years has done a lot on planning, a lot of thinking in vision, right? Well, now we need to start going from where we are to, well, what's realistic with these, these goals and how do we fund them? And if we're not gonna fund them, I think we have to be realistic with the community that we're not doing these things. Right. But we keep talking about the vision without funding it. And so I could be, I would be confused if I was a citizen wondering, well, where is all these improvements? Right, and I have a follow-up to what Linda was asking. So for example, you talked about complete streets, that we need a criteria. We have 50 something on the list and there's probably more that we don't even know about. So what kind of process do you wanna see um, so that you guys end up with a really good list and you can just start, all right, number one, let's apply for a grant or use chapter 90 or whatever, and let's knock off number one, let's knock off number two. What kind of, how do you see us coming together to get that criteria to make a, a good list? We need support, we need to have the right staff at the table and it's not existing because the existing staff are already doing things, they have assignments. Um, we may need to supplement that with uh, consulting support. I've talked with Steve Dukren at length about this and basically the consideration of, do we bring a third party in to look at our complete streets to help us start connecting the dots with some of those priorities we've already identified, help us understand a ranking criterion that we might wanna look as new uh, information comes our way or new projects or initiatives so we can screen it so we use a standard process i think this was done the challenge is what we have in concord is a lot of transition mm -hmm. and marcia is you know one of the more senior experienced uh, uh, uh um, managers we have and we're relying a lot on her but i know marcia wasn't completely involved with all the complete street work that was done with different staff. So we need to make sure that whatever we do, there is some succession planning, transparency. And when we talk about TAC, maybe they are the group to help us, you know, maybe staff can do some vetting, some screening. We provide TAC with some recommendations as far as scope and scale. And then they can try and work through the criteria to say, how does this get prioritized by the town? It's not just, what is the project when we talk complete streets we also hear connecting different parts of town as nick said you don't want to do one intersection here one crosswalk there without thinking what is the network we're trying to create and is it deliberate is it strategic because that's really the complete street concept right and what's the criteria is safety the top thing and then um 
you know, connectivity is next or, or, or is it that you're already going to be digging up the road? So put that at the top or is it whichever neighborhood yells the loudest or, you know, what's the criteria? And that's what we want to do is something that engineers can understand. But part of the criteria is the political process. Right. And that's not what staff should, right. can or should be involved with. Mm -hmm. That's not our role. I so think, a transfer she was trying to. Right, right. I'm, so, I'm trying to, I, Terry, you said it. We need criteria. We need to be able to look at each project through the various lenses that these projects need to meet. The needs of so is it is it support of the business community is it is it uh is it making a, a safer connection or so that we can bicycle from uh, concord center to west concord is it is it providing that additional crosswalk at on route two or is it connecting creating that path where to you know along sudbury road so that you can get to nine acre corner there are so many things that we are hit with on a on a fairly routine basis. Yes, we know these are problems, but as Alan said, we can't even maintain what we have. So so we need the criteria and we need that to come from the select board, the transportation advisory committee, the planning board, the public works commission, and, and the Concord residents to say, these are the various lenses that we need to look through as we evaluate our lists and our projects and, and our priorities. Thank you. Great. So you said we need the criteria and we need it from, go over that list again. You said from the Transportation Committee, the Select Board. The planning um, Board and the Public planning, Works Commission. Public Works Commission. And what about the Transportation Planner? Would, would that person be helpful? And Once that person is on board, I would hope so. I would hope that they would help. Um, and, um, and there probably are other groups as well. Uh, I think the, the Commission on Disability would be really important to be part of that conversation to offer us what are their criteria, what do they see as needs, um, and then the various business groups, they, they have a desperate need for bringing their, their workers into the community. Um, and so that means we're look, going to be looking beyond Conquer's borders. You know, we've, we've got to look to Lowell. We've got to look to um, north and, and south of, of where we are or to the east of where we are. How do we bring people into the community? And then what do we do with all our visitors that are going to be visiting in 2024 and 2025? So um, I, I know Public Works is focused on the, the roads and the sidewalks and the, you know, the infrastructure piece, but one of the other planning efforts is how do we manage the people uh, as they come into Concord and, and get them to their points, their interest points, their destinations. Great. Amanda Cohn. Amanda Cohn, I see you have your hand up. You're muted, Amanda. Amanda, you're muted. <laughs> Thanks. I'm gonna start, start again. Um, I just wanted to add that all of these topics are also really important to sustainable Concord and um, are supportive of our efforts of reducing emissions and transportation. Um, and as an urban planner, I couldn't agree more that we need to prioritize um, the projects that we know about. Uh, but I also want to balance that with the federal funding that's coming down the line. Some of it is going to be asking that the projects are construction ready. Um, and so some of the projects that we're already aware of that, you know, the 50 that are in the list, are there some of them that we can get designs for now so that when the funding is available and you have to have a shovel ready project that we have some of those that are in the pipeline. Um, so it's a bit of a balancing act, which maybe touches on what Alan is saying. We need people <laughs> that are doing the planning that are doing the design and and then are managing projects through the construction um, and making sure that we have projects really that are each of those three stages so that we are nimble based on the different grant requirements. Um, so I just wanted to put that piece out there. And I always, you know, back to the numbers, Alan, I think you put out a number like six million per year is needed for our current best maintenance of roads and if we say Concord's an average community in Massachusetts, there are some that are bigger, there are some that are smaller. 
and say six million per year is is what every community on average would need. There are 351 communities in Mass. That's two billion dollars a year um, just for maintenance. And so when we hear you know nine million is going to be available or billions are going to be available, we have to sort of put it in the context of who's competing for those funds um, when it is coming even from the state and the federal level. Um, they sound big, but when you divide it <laughs> over so many, it starts to go fast. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, Linda, did you have some other questions? Um, or was maybe? not right now? Okay, yeah. Henry, do you have some questions? <clears throat> Looking at the list of projects um, and the effort that goes into hiring consultants, paying consultants, and I think the enormous amount of staff work that must go into um, kind of pl planning for projects that never get done for one reason or another, that there's a lot of wasted money and motion that takes place because we're prioritizing these things at the wrong end. It seems to me we ought to be prioritizing these things before the work goes into applying for the grants and hiring the consultants and rather than having a list like the one we have here of more than a dozen projects, most of which will never get done, and we try to prioritize them after all the effort and money has been spent. And so um, the question is how do we prioritize them? I think that that's a, that is, as you point out, is a political decision, um, political in the best sense. I don't mean like, you know, fix the street that I live on. <laughs> uh, political in the sense that somebody has to make the decision and we can't really delegate it to the town employees unless we had a town employee who was like a director of public works who had the discretionary power to make all the decisions. And I don't think we can delegate it to the planning board or to the transportation advisory committee all they can do is provide us with information which is what we're doing now and then somebody has to make the choice um, among which projects we which wish to pursue um, and by attempting to be opportunistic and being ready for every opportunity that arises and have dozens of shovel ready projects that may or may not get funded uh, we're not really being efficient about this. So are you suggest what is you are you suggesting then for the process? It sounds like you saying that the select board should be making some decisions. Um, uh, how would you go about starting that whole process? I think if it's if not the select board, I don't know who else really this is a, a kind of a, a, a pyramid with somebody at the top right. that has um, uh, the ability to make deci decisions at least subject to the approval of the town meeting, right. which appropriates the money. But I think that somebody has to um, take the leadership role, as it were, and, and um, make decisions. Uh, right. uh, and without, I think, I think that... Um, um, if you will, um, uh, making a list of uh, criteria uh, doesn't really help that much. For instance, you said, what is the priority? Should they be safety? Well, safety is always a priority, but you can never, never spend enough on safety. I mean, because accidents will always happen. Systems will always fail. Right. You can make, you can, you know, you can make people drive around in a tank, but that won't get people any right. place. So I so, think that we agree with you, but the, my question is, how should the select board approach this? What Should we have some goals for next year? Should we ask staff to come back with some drafts? Should we ask the transportation committee to do some research? What, what do you want to- That sounds like a good idea, is to, we, is to, is, is to get um, proposals from the, various uh, employees, management people, and committees 
um, about um, about what they think are the most important things for us to do and in what order. And we could evaluate that, and then we can try and get that stuff into the budget through the town manager and get those things approved and maybe pick one or two things that we really can do. I mean, we have a transportation advisory committee. They came to us tonight. They identified a set of more or less abstract priorities. We, I think, it's incumbent on us at this stage, having been presented with those priorities, to decide whether we agree with them. If we agree with them, then the next step would be to ask the Transportation Advisory Committee in alignment with those priorities to prioritize a set of projects and then bring that back to us. And then that we would approve and that becomes the marching orders for our uh, town uh, department. Sound like a plan? Sounds pretty good to me. All right, so I think we should take but, but, that slide with the priorities and put it back up. Except the only thing that I would, uh, that I hesitate about is the number of iterations that it has to go through back and forth. I would like to try and minimize. Yeah, but I, I fear and tremble over us as a select <laughs> board trying to prioritize a set of transportation projects. We don't have right. the expertise nor the time i think we have a comment on it from um, somebody on the transportation committee oh no come on up oh, fine she, she's yeah from the concord housing authority concord no my name is stephanie krobeck i'm the vice chair of the concord housing authority um and um I guess my comments actually were to finish, uh, I, I wanted to finish what Matt was saying, and that is to the extent you identify what your priorities are, comma, then that becomes your, your story, your, pro, your, your, your detail when you go advocate for dollars. I think, and I see this on the Housing Authority too, we need to figure out how to go get some of that ARPA money and infrastructure money and get our state legislators here to help us with how we can get that because part of what i think we're struggling with is we're going to be in this do loop all the time of really not having enough dollars to do what i think are some of the bigger broad-reaching initiatives that we're talking about here we'll we'll keep talking about it and we will fix things but we won't do the big stuff right and in order to do the big stuff what i consider sort of foundational big stuff to keep up with where things are going you know in our world, um, we're going to need an, we're going to need incremental more money. I don't think that's necessarily incremental taxes. I think it's federal and state money. So that's my first choice. My first comment. The second comment I have in terms of criteria, criteria I think can work a couple ways. Certainly, safety and risk are important. Number one criteria is regulatory requirements is a good example of risk. But another criteria would be to what extent does this solution, this transportation solution, bring in revenue? To what extent does the solution also help us with the problem we're trying to solve for? And there are a whole host of good examples of that. And I'm sure there are also best practices in other towns we could probably shamelessly steal. Um, and then last, but certainly, certainly not least, to the extent you need um, local voices and really understanding what you, you talked about bikers, but the housing authority has a wonderful group of tenants uh, and families who I think would benefit greatly from transportation solutions to work, to doctor's appointments, to all the things we're talking about. And I would highly recommend that we use that group of residents, valuable, wonderful, uh, important residents in this town um as a part of your focus group discussions or survey um survey thank you for those comments stephanie so um i think we will in a few minutes go to matt's suggestion and put back next slide um and see where we're going to go but let's um finish with our board questions first um so I, i'm just um reminded listening to all this that you know, I think we need to um, 
rely heavily on our SMT in terms of all the work in their departments and what they've done. As a couple around the table have already pointed out, we have neither the technical expertise or the time uh, to take this on, which is why I was earlier um, trying to um, solicit some, some ideas about the planning process in and of itself. Um, having said that, um, Clearly, it's important to have other stakeholder groups input to, to the SMT uh, priorities that are defined. So even if a, uh, some criteria are identified for how these projects get evaluated, um, let's say project A now needs, if that becomes a priority that the select board um, decides on, really needs to go back again uh, to SMT for all the reasons they talked about in terms of the hidden costs, uh, underground costs, you know, the uh, and other things that happen. Right. So we're back, to, in my mind, we're back to having a point person or some kind of process with yeah. dedicated staff or resources that is able to walk this through including uh, obviously the town manager in this whole process but um mm -hmm. it, and there is a transportation it's, 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 planner it's, it's, in, in half <coughs> budget right so, so that's a start starting on it yeah start. and i i agree with you um nick could it, can i ask a question so, so, yeah. um yeah, i think um i love challenges so you know I, I don't hesitate to think about the possibility of helping set the priorities, but or deciding what's the most important. You have to put that right. Yeah, Pardon? right. Talk right into the microphone. Oh, okay. um, but um, we're a volunteer committee. <laughs> we're not full time staff. The committee desperately needs real staff that's dedicated to planning someone in Marsh's organization that really can be the bridge between the committee and staff. Um, I mean, I can imagine I could call a meeting with myself and, and uh, Alan and Marsha and begin to talk about priorities, but there's a lot of s s work that has to be done after that conversation, right? And we've taken a shot at, at looking at each of the transportation programs or ideas that have come up and saying, well, how does it impact, which does it impact? Sustainability, business community, and they all impact all of them, mm -hmm. right? Right. <laughs> you know, you're, they really do. <laughs> You know, safer streets help uh, help with the attracting tourists. You know, if we had a seamless way for tourists to get around town, that's an obviously, you know, a winner for the tourists. I mean, some are weighted more than others, but they all affect all of them. And I think we're just going to have what I believe, this is personal, but the way I believe is you decide what kind of town you want to be <laughs> and you mm -hmm. decide your priorities based on that. Right. How receptive do you want to be to tourists? Do you want to turn yourself into Disneyland? <laughs> Do you want to just be the national park? Do you want to promote the cultural organizations in town? How far do you want to go? You know, that's, that tells you some things about yourself, right? And about what community we want to be. That's very important because that, that's the right set of values. It, it, we should not be making this, this, these decisions based on funding that's available. And we are, are, um, are, um, heads are frequently turned toward doing something because money is offered to us uh, to do something that we otherwise would not choose to do, or at least I, would, I, not, I refer, it would not make it as a priority. Yeah, I refer that to the uh, business model of relying on the kindness of strangers. It doesn't get you too far. <laughs> and, right. and you don't know where you're going ultimately, right? Susan, you had to comment. Uh, yeah, I just, um, it sounds like from what Alan was saying that this 30 million or whatever it is over the next five years is really just to um, maintain what we've got. So I think there's something of the dance with the other funding sources that has to be done. And I'm not sure how I agree, Henry, that we have to set our own priorities, but clearly we're not going to be able to fund that stuff as a municipality. And we have to figure out how to work with the state and the federal government to 
to um, accomplish what we want to accomplish, but it's not a, it's not something that we can self fund. These, these big things that we're talking about is in reference to actually what Stephanie said about there has to be partnerships. And right. I, I'm not sure what the dance looks like. That's right. What that's what, that's one of the things we're trying to figure out tonight because all these things are interrelated. Um, I had a few specific questions for um, some of the um, specific people that were speaking earlier. Uh, one thing is for the Crosstown Connect, um, I think, Kate, you were speaking about that, or it might have been Marcia, but we need a vehicle. And it just seems like a shame that we're paying dues and we're in the program. We need a vehicle. It's, this seems like a short-term thing that maybe we can identify either in a upcoming capital plan or um, with one of the grants or um, is, wh what could we do to identify a vehicle? Well, you, it would just essentially be adding a vehicle to the fleet. So, I mean, the one, I guess the one thing that we could look at is using the same criteria that we use for the Council on Aging vans. They're generally, you know, 12 to 15 passenger vans with an ADA access. Um, I think we have a buy green policy, so we would have to work with um, Amanda to try to figure out if there's, you know, a hybrid or, or other things like that. Marsha has her hand raised. Right, and I also want to add, um, I know it, it's been suggested that maybe we don't need to add a vehicle. Is there any vehicle that we can, that isn't being completely used all the time? Like, I don't know, the COA van or school bus, or I know it's been talked about many times and there's many obstacles. So, um, Marcia, I know you wanted to answer the question. Maybe you can answer that one too. Well, I know that the, <laughs> the COA buses are, are fully, you know, that they are dedicated to the Council on Aging. And, um, but right now, Crosstown Connect is not functioning. They, they are on hiatus. Acton was the lead community, and we do not have a current intermunicipal agreement. So we would be starting up again, uh, and we haven't paid, you know, we, we haven't paid dues for this year. Um, so it, it's not functioning right now. So it's okay. a great idea, but I think we have to have that conversation. How do we get back into it? Or how do we develop a relationship with transaction associates so that they could help us at least address our local concerns and issues? Right, it's right. I think we need to be ready for when they do start up again. Speaking of vehicles, I know there are issues here, but we have dozens of school buses that are sitting right. idle the majority of the time. Um, and even if they are not the good, a good long-term solution because of their right. size and cost, if we want to... Um, do a pilot program in any of these areas, we have a resource that doesn't require a large capital investment. And you can try it with vehicles and drivers that you already have on town staff and are owned by the town um, and to run a program to see if the demand is there and to experiment with um, how it works and what routes they should run and what, what uh, schedules they should run on. Um, and um, it seems to me something that um, uh, is an easy way to, uh, uh, easy route to enter into um, these, uh, these transportation issues. Uh, Madam Chair, I just wanted to, I, Go ahead, Kate. I applaud the idea of that. It's not as simple, particularly with school buses, as just having a staff member do it. There's a particular license for that. So there's a small group of employees who are currently town employees that are bus drivers, and most of them work full time. So I think that there's also, um, you know, a union component to that too. So although that uh, we own the infrastructure, we own the, the bus or the, the town does or the district, I think that there it's it's not quite as easy or inexpensive as 
we would think. Um, the other thing is that um, unless we're using the electric buses, that's a diesel fuel. And, um, you know, while we're solving one problem, we're then contributing to another. Um, and so we're, you know, getting to our, our point where we want to be reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. And, right. you know, that certainly would not help us in that way. So I, I think we need to just make sure that we have the right information out there about who can drive school buses and what I'm saying is if we find that that there's the demand and that the that it works we can then start talking about making the capital investment to uh, obtain the you know the appropriate vehicles um, uh, so um, yeah it may not be a good long-term solution but it may be a very uh, a very a, a relatively easy way to uh, experiment with uh, how we can um, make, you know, how make uh, local transportation work in town because we own we own the resources and we have the school bus drivers. Right. So this is why I brought it up, not to solve the problem tonight, but this is an example of something that we've been talking and talking and talking about, and we're going in circles, and and it seems like it would be easy but it's not. And a related one is um, something you mentioned, Kate, about getting data for people under 60. We applied for a grant, and then I, I think that, I'm not sure if we got that grant, or is that the one? I think we, we didn't have the staff to administer the grant, I think is what it was. This is um, the one that's a regional, um, Grant, I think Marcia could answer this. I always forget the name of this one. It's uh, Sudbury is the um, host it was, it community. Was it was for taxi services. Right. And the idea of that was to collect the data. Do we have a need for these rides or not? And so I think that we have all of these initiatives. We have all of these conversations, but we have to find a way to get past all the talking and, and, and figure out how to actually get something done, which I'm hoping tonight we can start working on. I just want to share my screen for a minute to show what I'm hoping we can have a little bit of by the end of tonight. So, this is a transportation action plan. It's just a hypothetical spreadsheet where for um, I took each one of the ideas that Nick had on his slide, either immediate or long term. If I scroll, hopefully I can scroll down here. Uh, yeah, so I have each one of those that was on Nick's slide. And what we want to try and do is have the transportation committee come back in a few months with some kind of priorities and action plan and who might do it and by when. And even by when, it might be a five-year plan, but that's all right. But like, for example, public transportation, how are we gonna develop criteria? Who's gonna do it? What kind of priority should it have? Um, I mean, isn't that what we were presented with tonight? Right. That's what we're hoping that um, the transportation, that's what I'm hoping the transportation committee will come back with. But I mean, didn't, isn't that Nick's slide? Yes. Yeah, so I took set all of criteria? These, right. I took these ideas from Nick's slide. Okay. I just felt like the first one was the slide, but well we can we can show that slide again that Nick had okay. um, Aaron do you have that slide that Nick that Nick had <laughs> um, John um, can you okay thank you if everyone could please mute from home, thank you.
So these are the issues that the Transportation Committee has identified. And this is where we should focus tonight on what do we want them to work on to come back to us with? And I'm saying, I'm hoping they'll come back with what are the priorities, who's going to do what, what kind of time frame do we have? For yeah, I'm things? thinking of the slide that's before this one. Oh, okay. This the, one? No. no, one more before this. Whoops, hold it. There is a slide that says. This one? Yeah, the one with. The it's a list. It's, it's a list. I thought it was. Is there priority. one more after this? <laughs> I feel like I'm. This I hallucinated something. <laughs> no, but. That's the one I was just showing. Oh. It's okay. just on landscape versus. Uh, okay. But I, th I thought I saw that there are these different topic areas which I guess these are them, but we, no, but there were need groups, right? There was the, those themes. Yeah. So those are the criteria that we're going to use to evaluate the projects. Although you were frustrated because you said all of them affect all, but yeah, sure. I think that they clearly would affect some more than others, right? Depending on the project i mean you could do a low medium high you know it's not just that yes of course every yeah. project affects everything but some have a tremendous impact on sustainability let's say where others would have a minor impact right. and so you know from listening to the conversation tonight and looking back at this slide um one thing i would say is that you could this is just me it's not the committee okay so uh, is you could almost draw a circle around the one in the upper left, the Complete Streets Comprehensive Plan and the road safety, and say, you know, this is one area that needs work. They have a lot of overlap. Come up with an approach to dealing with this. Oh, I'm surprised. I, I thought that this was an output of the advisory committee. It is. It, it's our recommended Okay, roadmap. it's not just you. No, no, no. Okay. I'm saying what I'm about to say is just All right. me. It okay, isn't... thanks. So... <laughs> So, um, so my, excuse me, I'm supposed to be making sourdough bread. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I personally would say, look at complete streets in the upper left-hand corner and road safety, uh, draw a circle around the two of them and, you know, find a way, you know, we're not going to come up, my sense is, we're not going to come up with a big budget for doing a complete streets total design for the town, but you know, figure out how to deal with the safety issues and in the context of complete, complete streets philosophy, something like that. Okay. I would say looking at the ride services that perhaps the two things that most urgently need because Crosstown Connect is in abeyance, um, the fixed route bus service and the on-demand service. You know, the, the town of Newton is doing an on-demand service. Uh, Berkshire Regional Transportation Th Authority is doing it. Maybe we could get a cost of what, it's, what the annual run rate of that is and get some sense of is that, is that, is that something the town wants to That's do? That's the program they were running in Sudbury that we got funding for, but we didn't have any staff people. No, that was the fixed route. We got funded for the fixed route. Uh, that, bus that's service. another one, but the on-demand one, there were people. Okay, I, I'm not aware of it. I think yeah. Martha should say something like that. Yes. So anyway, uh, but you know, I, I we can take a best shot at something like that. I would say, you know, try to grab off the things that we think have the most impact. Do some analysis and, and do that. But um, my concern is going to be the staff support to do it because you know, meeting once a week. You can't really dig into going out and talking to the people who are running the program in Newton and getting all the data you need and then analyzing it and figuring out all the detail. Well, let me ask about the staff support. So if that half-time transportation planner goes through in the budget, and we haven't heard a lot of opposition, so assuming it would go through, that's at least a start. That could start um, in July, at least. and. Um, the amount of support affects the speed with which you can move. Right, right. And um, I was, I know that Aaron has been helpful, and I had a question for Aaron anyway about um, 
Someone asked earlier tonight, how do residents find out about things like the Yankee bus? Um, does Lyft operate in town, the ride, bike share? Is this something that you could put together on the, on the website, Aaron, since information is kind of your specialty? Um, yeah, that's something that we've been talking a little bit about at the Transportation Advisory Committee is uh, creating a list of what we already have in town so that people can take a look at it and say, I didn't know that there was a taxi service that was available, right. or, for instance, um, or um, I didn't know that there was a commuter rail station in town. I'd love to figure out how to get there and how to use it. So I think that having that list would be sort of a first step in that direction. And what kind of time frame do you think it would take to put that together? I believe that we have somebody on the Transportation Advisory Committee who's starting to look at that, if I remember correctly. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. <laughs> um, that might be something we have to revisit, but... I zoned out during that. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember that. I'm sorry. Um, but it might be a couple weeks out to really make sure that we have... Um, that we're touching upon everything that's actually mm -hmm. operating in town and not just things that people um, want to have in town. Right. The challenge in that sort of thing is keeping it up to date. Yeah, right. absolutely. So you can find out what's so today, but by the time you finish talking to the 20 parties, the first one has changed, and two months later, I'll guarantee you another one has changed. So it's not a one-shot project. It's somebody spending time on this every month. Definitely. Yep. There's a liability associated with, sorry, there's a liability associated with the town taking a position on one company over the other if we're not doing quarry checks and things like that too, which is what the holdup was. It wasn't that we didn't have the staff time necessarily, but for the taxi program, we needed to vet the taxi programs and have a contract before we just unilaterally had signed up a citizen to be, you know. That's a good point. And right. so I think, you know, we'll, I think it's a good idea, but there's, there's some due diligence that we have to do just to make sure that we're not pointing people towards an agency or, or something that would be harmful. That's what we have insurance for. Well, I think we can start by documenting um, the commuter rail and the ride, um, the, the things that we're feeling comfortable about in terms of the things that are agencies and not just some independent contractor, for instance. Right. right. OK. Are there other select board uh, questions, particularly about this? slide that we have up here or thoughts from other members of the transportation committee on this i mean i did have one other question which is that you know in many aspects of our society we have a lot of technology improvements and it always strikes me that with road maintenance it's the same way we've been doing it 50 years you know there's asphalt there's you know it it just and that the cost it just wears out fast now i know that new england weather is you know devilish that way um but i just you know and that the cost of the materials is a gating factor there's a lot of surface area to cover i just wonder is there some way we can break out of this uh you know vicious cycle of okay you know it's time to put down some patching time to you know re do the resurfacing and so on it, it just we never can get away from it if we have to constantly repair and replace sure i'm going to ask uh, steve dukran to if he's available to step into this uh, because the engineering division has reevaluated the techniques and we've been sort of promoting that pretty aggressively through a number of different hearing opportunities and meetings. The and, real and I'm not singling out Concord no, on this. I mean, this is- It's, it's, yeah. it's industry-wide. Yeah. And, and again, one of the problems we talk about, and we, we talk about pavement condition index, the PCI, and that is a metric that we use to across the town. It's one grade that takes into account all roads. And we've lost, uh, we've gone from um, good to fair condition over the past uh, three years that we've been measuring. And we every three years, we do this assessment. 
So we are uh, presently reevaluating how to treat the roads, and we're looking at an alternative, which is, you know, Steve Dukran, are you available? Do you want to um, speak to this? Because your group has been doing some research. We're looking at best practices around and communities near nearby. But, you know, I will say, until we start putting the level of investment that we need to, like we proposed, and when we underinvest, we are going to see increased compromised roads. It's oh, just yeah. the nature no, of the and I, Objectively, the roads yeah. are worse than they've been. And, right and, and yeah. we are well aware of that, which is yeah. why when we put a budget, and I'm going to go back to Concord Public Works budget was for repair, replace. And I get very concerned because we are behind the eight ball on the, that request. We haven't gotten the funding for that. We're now looking at what I suggest, building on a foundation that we haven't already agreed to, we're going to maintain. Right. So all these additional needs, I, I look at the winter maintenance efforts. I think what Nick is talking about is big picture. If we're changing transportation fundamentally, do we need to look at how we're doing maintenance and what the equipment materials are? I get concerned for the community that what our problem is, we look for immediate actions that don't take us anywhere rather than taking the long game. Mm -hmm. And if we keep doing that, we never get moved forward. I'm going to suggest that the staffing requirements and the professional expertise that we need, the town does not presently have. And I can share with you with the senior management group, most people are working many, many hours a week. And to say they're going to do something more in addition that's been not been done before, I think is a setup for failure for everybody. Staff won't succeed, the community won't benefit. I think what we need to do is identify consultants who can come in. The complete street matrix we have was compiled by a private consultant with town's support. So if we're really gonna reevaluate that, we need a consultant who has the expertise to do this sort of work and give the town and the senior staff recommendations that we can then share with any uh, board or committee. It says, this is where we are, and this is what we're going to do moving forward. We don't have that legacy information right now. Engineering division went back to the consultant who did this work three or four years ago, and the people involved with the project aren't there, with the consulting firm. So there is a, there's a lack of connectivity, right. which really affects everybody. And I think what we need to do, if we're going to move forward, we need outside support who can have the time, resource, and expertise to give town good guidance. Uh, Mr. Day and I would argue that planning and cost for design is significantly less than the cost for a poorly conceived capital project. It's, so I think what we really wanna do is understand, do we understand the existing complete street matrix? Do we use some tools to use screening with criteria that a consultant can bring to uh, the fore? Do we make sure we have all the interests of the community considered? Because we can't even say we have that at this point. Right. Then, and Steve Dukran mentioned to me that he's had this experience, the consultant can even do the complete street design. And we talk about what Amanda Cohn had mentioned being shovel ready. In-house staff can't do designs, it speaks to Mr. Dane's point, you, you, there's a lot of time and energy to just go through a design. Well, in-house staff is going to be dealing with the maintenance and replacement, not the complete street components. That's a whole other level of skill, expertise. So I think we need to identify a team supported with staff, but not staff doing it. What I'm hearing is the committees looking to be supported by existing staff to realize what we want for Concord, I don't think it's going to happen. I think if staff works for consultants and reports back to committees and boards, we'll start getting a, a, a framework that we can work with, that we understand. And I think ultimately the political decisions are going to be combined with engineering recommendations and concepts and pricing, at least preliminary costs. And then we can look at the, the safety issues the community issues and the political issues together. And that's where I think TAC could ultimately be sort of a volunteer group who's familiar with these concepts. The select board isn't going to be, you're going to get informed.
the Public Works Commission will be informed because they have other charges they're dealing with. Right. But maybe the TAC could be that entity right. that can sort of disseminate what is of interest to the town, what should be funded, and make those recommendations as they go through town meeting preparation. Public Works, I regret to say, we did a good job educating on the needs. We didn't get the money. It's not because we didn't make a good case, it's because the town didn't have the money. And so what we need to do is say, you know, work with the town manager and say, is there another funding source to do the maintenance stuff we're talking about? I get very worried about building on a foundation that's crumbling. And right. I'm hearing a lot of that. And I just think the you know, expertise and consultant firm could help us. And um, I don't know, Steve Dukran, if you have. Yes, you know, yes, I'm here. So, Madam Chair, if you could recognize me, I'm Steve Dukran, town engineer. Uh, to complete your thought, uh, to answer the question for Mr. Johnson regarding that vicious cycle, um, it, it is it is a vicious cycle for us. It's New England. You build a brand new subdivision road, uh, low traffic. You expect the life of it to be twenty five years with regular maintenance, you know, puddle patching, sealing the cracks, and so on. You build the same street for an arterial or uh, a major road through, through the town uh, and the center of the town expect a much shorter life, 10 to 15 years. Um, it's it's the, the nature of the material. It's asphalt. It's subject to the elements, uh, salt for winter maintenance. And that's what we have. And so every community deals with that. Uh, we are not fortunate uh, to be in a better climate where, 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 they, where their roads uh, survive their elements better. Um, so what we're dealing with, but uh, with regards to this transportation plan, um, we, we like to focus on complete streets. Um, maybe we should change our thought into uh, one of being a complete transportation because that's what we really need. Um, we really haven't figured out exactly how the, the complete streets prioritization plan was put together. We know it was a result of uh, some meetings, uh, a lot of feedback from, from the residents. Um, when I look at those, uh, those projects, I see a lot of little projects that, uh, you know, dispersed throughout town, they're not connected, and we need to put them together so that you get at Complete Street. Um, you know, I, I would like to see a, a third party, a firm, a consulting firm that will come in and, and Look at our transportation needs. All everything that's been discussed tonight, and start putting action to, to all those thoughts because we have a lot of plans. You know, Marshall talked about the the long range plan was done several years ago. Um, we have a lot of those kinds of plans. Um, it's just we haven't really put them together. And um, I would love to take a, a bold step um, in hiring a a full service firm. I will come in and look at all of these and it will cost money and it'll be the cost of doing business. Um, but we, we cannot afford to continue to piecemeal our transportation project because we'll end up with a crosswalk here, a piece of sidewalk there, uh, maybe a bike lane here. Um, but it's, it's much bigger than that. Uh, when I came to town a couple of years ago and I, I looked at the, the condition of our streets, uh, I said, we have to start there. We have to start with what Alan talked about, where we have to invest in getting good roads and good infrastructure, good drainage, and so on. And uh, we can accomplish that based on the plan that we presented for capital funding this year. We should get that funding. But then we have to beyond that and start taking these infrastructure and start using them the right way. Um, uh, the firm that I'm advocating for would have to have uh, would have to be selected based on the experience of doing this kind of thing um, in, in a town of our size, as well as to have the expertise in in, um, in the art technology and um, and plan the future kinds of technologies. Because other places uh, and other states are preparing for those for 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 the future. I don't think we are doing that right now. Um, and then what? And uh, uh, brought in, they have to have that experience in, in, in sustainability and energy and, and, and protecting the natural resources at the same time. That's why I'm looking for a full service term where, where we, the town, can build a relationship, a long term relationship 
so that the, the, the projects can be delivered um, in, a, in a timely fashion, in a, in a schedule that's set up by the town, instead of waiting and seeing like we've been doing for all these years. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Uh, this time I want to see if there's anybody else um, on Zoom. We have more than 40 people. Um, I know a lot of people were invited to this meeting. Um, so if you have comments or questions. Ann Sussman has her hand raised on Zoom. Ann, Ann, Ann Sussman. Sussman has okay. her hand raised. Ann Sussman. Hi, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you so much. I'm Ann Sussman. Um, I'm speaking from Bradford Mill right now. I'm on the West Concord Advisory Committee. I think this is such an important meeting that the selectmen are holding. I think everything you brought together is just fantastic. And there is such concern in West Concord and in the cultural district about safe walking and biking. And I also think it's kind of getting, we're getting a little neurotic about it because we're really worried about what's going to happen when the bridge opens over Route 2 that some people have said to me they don't think the town's prepared for the volume of people on bikes and walking and stroller pushing that are gonna come over that bridge. And that when you compare the West Concord Cultural District with like Rockport, which is a cultural district or Northampton, they're much more easy to linger in and walk around if you don't know them. They're really designed for, you know, to encourage tourism and passersby and lingering. And I think in a way, I know I heard you talk about where to spend your, your, your um, you know, where to spend money, where to put your attention to first. I think I would argue that given the commitment we made with the cultural district seven years ago in forming the Junction Cultural District with the, with the Cultural Council, Mass Cultural Council, excuse me, uh, that we really should make it a priority for people to be as safe and to be as welcome in um, the cultural junction as they are in Rockport. Uh, it's fantastic we are having that first complete street funding, but the fact is it will still leave half the sidewalks not there on Valverde Mill. It will still be missing four really important crosswalks. And then we have trouble you know, with streets not designed with the cobblestones to slope traffic the way they do on, on the new Cambridge Turnpike. So there's lots we have to do and the West Concord Advisory Committee would really like to help you and the transportation board. We want to be able to support our artists. We want to be able to support our entrepreneurs. We want to do what the Mass Cultural Council wants us to do to make this a walking tourist interesting place. But right now um, we're, we're just not there. And, and um, it, exciting things are happening, but I almost think, I know this is a crazy idea. Maybe we could talk about it later at the West, W West Concord Advisory Committee, that maybe we should take some quick fixes um, in Northampton, when they didn't have money to, to, to make crosswalks, the uh, town people and the business people gave the paint and then the, the um, public works in Northampton painted wild um, rainbow crosswalks all over Northampton, which they capture attention and they, they did what they needed to do. So I think we need to do some quick wins. And I think we need to look at what other towns have done, um, because face it, we're not the only one with the financial issues. Um, but it's going to be, I think, severe. The pivot from 1960s car-centric planning to 21st century bike pedestrian planning is huge. It's just huge. And we, we got it. We got to start leading. And I won't get into the aging population as a baby boomer. I'm terrified of that. I don't think we're, we've designed for baby boomers and we need them to be able to walk safely and not just drive, but that's a whole nother conversation. Anyway, we, we'd love to support you at the West Concord Advisory Committee and really any kind of links you can think and making it a safe place to walk and bike in the junction as more and more people will use it next year or this Thank year. You, Thank you, Ann. Other people uh, from the public? Uh, who are out there on Zoom, raise your hand if you have a comment or question. Pamela Dritt. Pamela Dritt. Pamela, 13 Concord Green. I want to keep people's minds on the fact that when it comes to safety, we're poisoning our children on diesel school buses, which is the most polluted thing you can do for developing brains and lungs. Uh, has been scientifically established and that we really do need to electrify the entire school bus fleet at a high priority, both for climate change 
and for protection of our children um, and using the buses for um, other transportation, particularly in the summer tourist thing, seems like a great idea. Um, and also, of course, for utility backup. Thank you. Bill Robichaud. Yes, good, uh, good evening. Uh, Bill Robichaud, 25 Nancy Road. Um, I've been the trail steward for the Reformatory Branch Trail for pretty much more than a dozen years. Uh, and I believe I have a lot to share uh, regarding that trail. Uh, the TAC is going to be hosting a walk on the trail on March 21st at 10 o'clock. The Trails Committee may be holding uh, an additional walk following the Trails Meeting on March 29th. But I'm going to be leading uh, a number of walks, which I'm going to call a Reformatory Branch Amble. I'm going to be doing on this Wednesday from 2 to 4 in each subsequent Wednesday from 9 to 11. Uh, we'll start at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the purpose of the walk is to have open discussions. Um, I am uh, an unelected citizen of Concord with no committee or board uh, membership. So there should be no open meeting uh, restrictions on that. I will do the facilitation of the walk. I promise to be fair and allow all sides to be heard as long as they are civil. Um, there'll be no official meeting uh, minutes or recording of the walk. Uh, and I just ask that anybody who has a restriction on um, open meeting rules, just make sure that there's no quorum in involved with it and, or reschedule whatever walk you want to have. Um, I, I want to let everybody know that everybody is welcome on the walk. Pro, con, uh, walkers, bikers, dog walkers, employees, committee members, board members, whoever wants to learn about the reformatory branch, uh, I feel I have a lot to share on that. So I just wanted to make that announcement. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Bill. So um, I think we should um, see if we have any more comments from the select board or the transportation um, committee to see, um, you know, ha have we accomplished anything tonight? It, it's, a, it's a good start talking about all the issues. Where do we want to go from here? What suggestions do we have? Um, Linda. Well, I, you know, I, I've heard um, a good case for bringing in a, con a consultant and some technical expertise to assist our staff mm -hmm. um, in proceeding. And so I think this, for me, um, is one of the priorities for the use of the ARPA funds. OK. Um, do we have any kind of cost estimate, Al Alan? Is, are we talking about, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars or what, what kind of ballpark are we talking about we haven't had any conversation with staff on next step with consultants just the concept i don't know if um i don't know if steve dukran has any any thoughts on that but it would be you know i'm going to guess hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah that would be my guess well, I think it would be useful to know because this ARPA money, um, we do have received some of it already and we're starting to plan it. So we'll, you know. we'll, we'll do some homework to try, to try and Thank find you. out what those costs might be. Great. Uh, ballpark. Okay. I think, I think that uh, thinking about all these things, um, our agenda here may be um, uh, too wide in order mm -hmm. for us to be able to focus on the the parts, for instance, mm -hmm. <clears throat> maintaining of the roads and all of that infrastructure is, I guess, as relevant to transportation is because you can't transport anything if you don't have a road to transport it on. But I think that's really kind of a different issue from the 
trans transportation issues like the van and bus and mm -hmm. how you get from one place to another and um, improving roads is not a revenue producing activity whereas transportation actually the going from place to place may be a revenue uh, producing activity and then we have another whole aspect of um, transportation which is our parking rules our parking meters our parking garages mm -hmm. and the effect of our parking bylaw on uh, business activity and and uh, that type of thing and I would I think that it might be uh, make sense to kind of break this break this down into the roads and bridges kind of thing mm -hmm. the how do you, how do you get from one place to another thing and then the effect of our regulatory scheme on what we let people do and how we how we uh, how we control it okay uh nick yes um from what i've heard so far i think what i would take away for the uh, assignment for the transportation advisory committee is to take this uh all the stuff that was on that one page all those possible project areas and apply some logic to prioritizing them mm -hmm. in terms of things we've heard tonight and uh, other realities and uh, come back with a sense of what you know our thoughts on what you what we think you might want to consider how you might want to select board might want to prioritize them and i don't know how long that will take exactly um, a couple of meetings probably mm -hmm. um, but then beyond that to do anything after that you have to get into cost estimates and that's going to require staff work well and isn't that when the transportation planner would be likely joining would be like, around that time uh, that frame. would be great yeah yeah <laughs> that might work out yeah that but I mean it's also it's not just staff work. it's also Alan and support from Alan and Marcia and right that means and Alan's already people are already very busy so but you know we've got to answer that question that Linda had about what the consultants yep. uh, what it would cost so I think right. that's a that's a fair question and we need some ideas and I have heard um Carrie talk also about a consultant right so um I think a lot of people are thinking alike and I think that's a good plan if uh, again I'm sharing this um just taking all your all your ideas Nick and and you know, if you can come back to us with some kind of priority, I mean, um, maybe winter transport. We'll figure it out. You know, is the no, top don't, priority don't or the don't last one or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you guys figure it out. Let us know, and we'll have another conversation with you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Well, I. Oh, okay. go ahead, Susan. Sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to thank um, Nick and the TAC for um, kind of taking on the lion's share of this um, endeavor in presenting tonight. So thank you. And also thanks to Alan and, and Kate and all of the uh, senior staff who contributed and will be part of the future of this. Thank you. Yes, it's a very, very large topic. A lot to take on, and you've been working really hard on it, the TAC and the staff. So um, thanks to Erin, Marsha, Nick, and the whole committee. Uh, we'll see you again in a few months, I guess. Uh, thank you. OK. At this time, let's see. What else do we have on our agenda? Back to there. Disposition of Warren articles. Yes, warrant articles. Okay. Okay. First one that we're supposed to do tonight is 17, is that correct? Um, eight. There was eight. Oh, yes, eight. Which I thought we heard we were not going to have any. Right. That's why it's on the list. I put tonight on. Right. Some right. articles that I thought we could easily uh, deal with. So we don't anticipate anything happening for Article 8, which means we can either go for no action 
or we can wait and report at town meeting. I think we just want to say no action because I think Carrie's already made it clear that there won't be any. Right. I mean, right. There could also we could just state no motion expected. Exactly. So that's it, what I think is a lot clearer answer, yeah. by right. the way, because it's, it, it does. And, and it doesn't, I, it's just like forty eight and forty nine, yeah. which were. Um, well, except that for that they say no action were unanimous. Well, I think, I think we really we voted no, no action. action. Right, but it really, I think. Ideally, we should be saying no motion expected. I, ideally, what, Matt? We should be saying no motion expected rather than exactly. no action. Anticipated, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So we don't even need to vote on that, I don't think, if it's no right. motion just, expected. Yeah. All right. So now we are on 17. Right. Minuteman Regional Technical High School. So I didn't have the presence of mind during the presentation at the public hearing to ask another key question for me, which is right now, a lot of the member towns are benefiting from the uh, four year averaging because their enrollment is increasing, which is inc reducing their per student costs. But then once that levels off and uh, maybe worse uh, on the downside, mm -hmm. that four year averaging can result in a presumably quite high uh, per student cost. And the, the question that it was left me with was, is there uh, any way that a town could leave the agreement on short notice effectively to mm -hmm. sneak out of that? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know the answer. So that right now I feel like we're kind of in this honeymoon period where we have, in, in, I mean honeymoon, it's not quite a honeymoon. It's a very expensive ring. Let's just say that um, that uh, we, you know, are have increased enrollment. It's uh, all, you know, great. The, the new facility, uh, you know, clearly the program's successful. Um, but as enrollment levels off, those per pupil costs are going to start to increase. Mm -hmm. So, are you saying that you'd like to? Um... Well, I'm just find out the answer to this well, before we vote on no, this. No, I, I think that we still need to vote on this budget. I just I am still concerned as a member of town not having real, you know, control that it, the agreement in the past, like the OPEB experience that we learned about, mm -hmm. you know, is quite a cautionary tale. Mm -hmm. And I do look at this methodology of the averaging and I just do worry about the kind of gaming the system that could happen. So that's all. Um, that said, yeah, it's it's the budget. It's um, well. Um, we need to pay it, <laughs> right? So I think we can find out that answer. Um, maybe Kate could look that up for us. Um, for, it's it's a public document. Sure, sure. And, no, uh, I know it's not it, a yeah. secret or no, anything. No, no. Just... And I do remember that when the um, sick about six towns left several years ago. Right. But they had to give. I don't know, 24 months notice or, or some, it wasn't four years though, but it was some That's amount right. of years. And so we could find that out. Yeah. So are people prepared to vote now or do you want to wait for that answer? I mean, the only other thing on my mind was that, you know, we voted for that lighting for the fields, you know, that was supposed to be an income generator. Mm -hmm. And I still couldn't make heads or tails over whether it was a net income generator. I saw the budget line, but I didn't see, you know, the revenue line tied to it. They just opened a few, so. I think okay, they so there hasn't been yet. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, because. Homecoming, their homecoming game. Yeah. Um, is the first time they used it, so they only have one football game. Kate, you could. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, so, so they, they just opened the field. So. Okay, but they do intend to rent those fields out oh, yeah. quite aggressively. They do. In fact, they have yeah. staff and everything to do it. Correct, yes. All right. And yeah. all that goes into revolving fund there. Right, the to help offset to costs. Them. So I just, that was the only other checkpoint that I had on this. Otherwise, yeah. Well, if we, if we withdrew, which it would be, I think, a drastic step, the town would have to educate those oh absolutely those no i'm not i'm not proposing that we and pull we out really and and for the uh the type of education that the students get who go there we're, we're in no position to provide right. that i don't education. think he's proposing that he's saying if another town withdraws then our assessment will go up yeah. right 
Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm I'm okay with it then. I mean, I. So Other, you ready to vote? Yeah. <laughs> Other questions about this article? All right. Is everyone ready to vote? Okay. Move affirmative action on Article 17. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now, on Article 18, I am going to recommend that we put off this vote, and I'll tell you why. After the public hearing, last Thursday, I stayed for the Finance Committee meeting, and everything went through in 10 seconds except this article. It was a very long discussion. And the Finance Committee and the School Committee are still $312,000 apart, and there's more, I think, negotiating that's going to be happening. And I mean, if you want, we can take a position tonight, but I don't think our role is to be necessarily the referee between those two committees. I think we should stand behind the finance committee. Well, I think we should wait and see the outcome of their deliberations too, or, you know, and what the finance, they didn't vote last night. Um, or the they night voted no action. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. But things may still change. And we may have to report a town meeting. Or we can decide um, one way or the other tonight or, or um, in a few weeks. Well, we don't have to decide now if we think that negotiation is going forward and that there may be a compromise right. or a, right. an accommodation. Right. So um, I guess the right answer is to, take, is to uh, defer any action on it until we know what the final result is. But ultimately, I think that it's really important that this board support the finance committee. Okay. Not just in this, but in right. everything else. Right. Okay. Um, does anyone want to take a vote on this one tonight? No. Okay. Number 19, Concord Public Schools Capital Projects. Are we ready to vote on that one? I thought that was fairly straightforward. No. Any discussion on this one? No. All right, we're ready for a motion. Move the select board recommend affirmative action on Article 19. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, number 20, appropriation to stabilization fund. I Any? think it's a very prudent move. <laughs> yes. I think we actually recommended it yes. in um, our September focused meeting. So I'm very pleased that they are following through with that. And they have a really good plan to get five million total. This would get it up to, I think, three and a half million. Any discussion? I mean, the only other discussion is, you know, I had suggested originally that some of the ARPA funds be applied to FY22, in which case, you know, or, or even 23 here, that where they could help shore up the free cash balance, because we are pushing pretty hard on free cash mm -hmm. with the three different potential uses here. Mm -hmm. and we don't want it to dip below the minimum, and we have the wherewithal to prevent that, um, you know, through our town process and in, in the ARPA funds. And I, I think that that is a, a use of ARPA funds that, you know, where we're not uh, kind of just earmarking things projects that we like whereas in, you know instead it's a town vote that is approving the use of the funds that we have put into the bank and that's how we can you i don't know if it's it's specifically the subject of this article but i think what you're saying is that if the arpa funds go into free cash then they are available for yeah, and just purposes. a sum of them. We don't need to throw all of them in there, you if, know. If I understood, Carrie, though, um, the regulations don't allow money to go into a reserve, and so it would ha have to go in indirectly. Correct. That's right, and that's yeah. go into free cash. Right. It go, it go, would go it goes into, into free, free cash. cash. Right. Yeah, we just right. apply Which then it. also helps us with our bond rating but situation. I, th I thought that free cash is like a reserve. Exactly. No, no, no. Free cash is just... 
it's um, like your checking account yeah, balance. I understand right. that, but it's not. You can't. You, can, you can't specifically say we're going to put ARPA into a stabilization fund, but you can put ARPA into, into free cash lost revenue. And then and we then can it, okay. right. use the free cash for things. For things. But I think that in this case, I'm not sure. I heard Carrie say that definitively. I, I thought she was concerned about. I, I think she was quite clear about that. She said that you could not use it, for instance, for right. uh, for debt service or anything. Correct. Like that. No, no, and no. we no. were not. Could but you could indirectly Correct. use it for that purpose if you put it into free cash, so it could be appropriated the way any other funds were right. appropriated. You put it into lost revenue and then it becomes free cash and then okay. you can yeah. that's, that's, the, that's the indirect right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And okay. did, by the way, did you see the New York Times article on ARPA funding? The, no. Very interesting. Very interesting. Definitely worth a read. No, it was in this past week. Really? Yes. There is an article. Can you send that around? Um, I don't think uh, Sure. Is... Though they, they have a pretty serious paywall, but yes. <laughs> um, well, I, I have a subscription. Oh, yeah. sure, we I do too. From the from the library. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. So I mean, if you, yeah, you can print it out. If you just go in the New York Times and you just say ARPA, okay. it'll pop right up. All right. I'd so say. anyway, getting back to this article, what I think I might be mistaken, but what I think the Finance Committee has in mind here is to both appropriate the money in this article. And then also do what Matt is talking about, that any surplus at the end of the year um, would go to free cash, which could indirectly fund um, some more stabilization fund. Or, for example, in Article 24, met perhaps using ARPA for that one instead of depleting mm -hmm. the yeah, cash. Yeah, yeah, right, right. We may be in the same old position. So well, would there have to be some um, article at town meeting in order to put the ARPA funds into the... There's no the article needed to, to put the money in. The only thing is to put to take the money out. Is This is what I've been proposing, is in order to spend the money. Because ARPA, as it stands right now, we could sit here, or even Carrie could just yeah. say, and this is what that New York Times article is about, oh, well, that was lost revenue, so I'm just going to decide... Mm -hmm. to spend it on this mm -hmm. with no approval from any town body mm -hmm. and in fact there's some pretty controversial things that some people have done <laughs> and there's no controls well so, we're sure you know we're seriously underpaid the members of this well program. that that we might have a little trouble with but <laughs> um anyway i think that we're uh, the just the point i wanted to make though is that here we're in a good I think we're, we can put ourselves in a good sh position with certified free cash, regardless of the spending. Right. Okay. So is there a motion for this Article 20? Sure. M move the select board approve affirmative, I mean, recommend affirmative action on Article 20. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Number mm. 21, Concord Carlisle Regional High School budget. Any discussion? I think they've come in under the guideline. Now. I thought it was a good presentation. I thought it was. They came in under the guideline, and then they wanted credit for that for it going over on the public right. school. Right, which which there has not um, happened. Happened, correct. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and it was a fascinating discussion about how. You know, faculty salaries are going up at the rate of five plus percent, yes. but the budget's only going up at mm -hmm. three mm -hmm. point something. Right. And how the magic happens to make that work. You know so. how you know how this always works. It's that when the enrollment goes up, the budget goes up per capita in proportion to the increases. When the enrollment goes down, it goes up according to the increases in the cost of living. Mm. So it I always see. goes up, whether okay. enrollment well, goes up or down. Well, anyway. Well, anyway. I, I think we're okay with this. I mean, at least I am. I am. I don't have any problem with it. Okay. Move affirmative act. Uh, I'm sorry. Move the select board recommend affirmative action on Article 21. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And the last one we're doing tonight, 
is, is number 22. And I do want to report a little bit about this one. We had a, a couple of problems, which I think have been solved as of today. So the first problem was there's a stabilization fund that is being proposed to use $200,000 toward this project. And there was a lot of research that had to be done because the stabilization fund was created in 1991. And there we had a meeting with Carmen and legal counsel today. And any, anyway, that all worked out. That is, uh, Kate was at that meeting. There is a stabilization fund. There is enough money in it for the 200,000. So that worked out. The second issue was that the rest of the money, 835,000, is proposed to be exempt from Proposition 2.5, but that is a ballot question. Yeah. And it would have had to have gone on the ballot by vote of our committee a week ago. Uh -huh. The deadline was March 8th. So we had kind of an emergency meeting this morning as, or this afternoon about this. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep this article on the town warrant. If it passes, and if Carlisle passes it, then in September, when we have a primary election, this question will appear on the Concord ballot because it cannot uh, um, come on our April 12th ballot. Now we've, we're beyond the yeah, 35 days. Yeah. But does that mean the work can't commence? The work will not be able to commence until the day after that ballot, which is September 6th. But so what was the other 800,000 going to be allocated to? The, pro the project is 1,035,000. 200,000 is coming from stabilization and 835,000 is going to be from exempt debt. It's going to be borrowed and um, exempt from prop two and a half. But do, I mean, it's not a huge number. I so agree. Why does it have to be why does it have from to prop be two and a half? Uh, that was my question. And the answer was given that this has been the tradition. This is how it's been at CCHS. So I've, lo I've asked them to look into it for the future. Because if they just struck that provision, then we'd right. just borrow the funds and well, be done. Well, we yeah. looked into that, and legal and bond counsel say that you cannot strike that now what? because it will be not in the four corners of the article. Because now the, ex the voters are on notice. I know. I, I already tried all that. So um, Because their taxes would go up in the yeah. short term. Right, and they've been notified through the warrant that this is uh, what we're going to be doing. So another possibility. Hold it, hold it. Actually, it wouldn't have any impact on taxes. It would just have just an impact on whether we it. could further raise taxes without well, affecting Prop 2 and a half. Well, anyway, legal. I don't see how that's outside of the four corners. Well, you know, I agree with you, but I'm not legal counsel. Legal counsel and bond counsel have both decided it's not within the four corners. We cannot do it. The only thing we could do would be to have a special town meeting within the annual. Mm -hmm. And Carlisle really doesn't want to go through all of that. Anyway, after all of these shenanigans and all of these discussions and all of this, the best solution we came out with was we're going to keep the article the way it is. And September 6th, it will be on the ballot instead of April 12th. And the project will commence if it's approved um, any time after September 6th. Okay. So is the issue that the scope of the article, they can't strike bond, the, the bonding provision, because I, I, I believe that whether or not something is within the scope of the article is in the absolute discretion of the town moderator. No, they, they can be appealed. Oh, I mean on the floor. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean it's. Well, uh, but if the, but if the moderator says it's within the scope, right. and then no appeal but, is taken from the floor, it's within the scope. Right. But and the they moderator can be validated by right. the, oh, the good. attorney general. But the yeah. moderator has consulted with counsel, and this is their ruling. Oh. We're. I mean, I don't. I mean, it's really it's, terrible because guess what? September sixth is when school's just starting. So now you're going to pave this road during school well um dr hunter was on the call jared was on the call and they are willing to work with it 
Oh, talk it's about just, timing. Yeah. If you re read about what the proposal is for the uh, repaving of Route Two A, they planned the they plan to start that in 2024. Oh, oh perfect! Great. And just in time to interfere with the 250. Terrific. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm sure we'll be getting to that discussion at our next meeting. Okay, so what we can do right now is um, we can take a position on this article or not. Um, we are not the moderator. We are not town council. Well, maybe the town moderator might change her mind. She's entitled to do that. Well, I'm, okay, I'm going to write a note. All I right, just... let's put off this vote then. But um, I have recommended that the high school – uh, school committee take a look and come up with a policy for the future that and come up with a dollar amount like let's say for example 500,000 mm -hmm. whatever the tradition was if we have a future Codify it. Yeah. capital project that's only one or two hundred thousand you know let's not go through <laughs> all you. this bless you let's um you know have a have a policy on this but for now this is where we are so do we want to um, wait and not take a position? Yeah, let's wait. Yeah. OK. All right, we will put this one on a future agenda. And at this time, I think we are ready for nominations and appointments. Second. I'm correct. Um, nominations, uh, Elizabeth Cobbs of 31 Pond View Lane to the Personnel Board. Danielle Darzen of 197 Belknap Street to the House, Concord Housing Development Corporation, and Nancy Crowley of 5 Concord Green Number 7 to the Public Ceremonies and Celebrations Committee. I think it's Daniel Drazen. Drazen. Okay. I, I believe we had a Try to remember that next week for the appointment. <laughs> we were back and forth on that. Okay. Apologies to Mr. Drazen if we don't have that correct, or Mr. Darzen. Yes, Drazen. Okay, it's Drazen. Great. Second. No, no, it's not a motion. <laughs> it's not a motion. <laughs> I can say that. <laughs> okay. All right, we're it's on my a job to speak out of turn. <laughs> to nominate or to second out of turn. <laughs> All right. So appointments. Uh, move to appoint Keith Bergman of 56 White Avenue to the Metropolitan Area Planning Council town representative. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, Keith. And is there any other public comment? Uh, I better look on my. It's okay here. if there are none. Oh, I do see um, Tanya and Keith. Okay, Tanya. Thank you. Um, hi. Keith was first, actually, but <laughs> congratulations, Keith. I'm so glad we have somebody representing us on the MAPC now. I know you were there in, a, in an important role as a Littleton town manager, so I'm glad you're there for Concord now. Um, as I was just going to say that as far as Articles 46 and 47 are concerned, the Reformatory Branch Trail articles that Bill was also referring to, uh, Concord can in the morning tomorrow at 8 a.m. has a breakfast where they will discuss those articles. I suspect that sustainability will be their focus. And uh, to register, just go to their website, concordcan.org. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Keith, did you have your hand up? Uh, yes, thanks very much, Terry. I just wanted to express my thanks to the board for uh, this uh, appointment tonight to represent uh, Concord on the MAPC Council, and I, I appreciate very much that uh, tonight's vote. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, Keith, I note that there's no expiration on that appointment, so you're there for the duration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think yeah, MAPC will send, send me back after three years, uh, okay. one way or another. So, well, thanks. we should be the we should be the ones thanking you. You're going to yeah. be doing all the work. Thank yeah, you thank so much. You. Thank you. Well, I'm I'm at all of those MAPC meetings anyway, and I'm happy to be there on Concord's behalf, also. So, okay. thanks Great. again. So okay. maybe Robin can add the term for. The appointment? Yes. That's a good I idea. I mean, I, I would say, well, in fact, I could 
uh, withdraw my motion and remake the motion if you would like. All right, let's was, do that. So withdraw. Uh, so first of all, move to withdraw the motion to appoint Keith Bergman at 56 White Avenue to the MAPC. Second. And then uh, to, 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 we have to, to vote, vote that. that. Okay. To vote to I mean, it feels favor. bad to vote Aye. that. Aye. Aye. And then move to appoint Keith Bergman, 56 White Avenue, to the Metropolitan Area Planning Council town representative um, to expire April 30th, uh, 2025. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 There you okay. go. We shortened your sentence. <laughs> Thanks very and much. Now, okay. now we'll take and enter, entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, our next meeting will be March 28th. But Thank you. Terry, we still